So um, Art Wade came up with uh, this shape, which he showed me, and it appears to be a combination of the twisted cube with the armoured ball process, uh, the, the second type. An interesting combination of the two processes, and you get to radically different results. And he said he'd been experimenting with a lot of different uh, primitive shapes, and uh, so if they, if they all could, turned out as well as this, then it's obviously something worth exploring. So. With that in mind, what I thought I'd do is have a little experiment and we'll combine a few different things. We'll get close to that shape and then perhaps head off in a different direction. So right click and create a cube, select the entire object, select face tool, right click, left click on extrude. And at this point you need to right click on normal. Uh, the difference between the right click on the normal and the left click is that when you right click you it allows you to extrude each face individually so if I do that now you can see how the individual faces come out you want to hold the shift key down and get a distance of two so we're extruding two now at this point I'm going to rotate each of these faces 90 degrees so right click rotate normal shift key again and choose 90 and uh, I'm going for positive 90 to start with then extrude again right click left click on extrude you can left click on normal this time because there are no adjoining faces and that takes you out to here press plus to extend the face selection and then deselect the end of each face whoops okay and there there and there right click extrude right click on normal so each one comes out as an individual face again holding the shift key down to get exact measurements and we're rotating normal and I'm going to rotate um, left 90 degrees this time so that's minus 90 degrees uh, you can make arbitrary choices about this rotation it will just change the end result slightly press space to deselect so you select each of these faces from top and bottom like so and there's another selection for the side the reason that I'm not just extruding them as they were is that then I would have faces colliding and create overlapping geometry and I want to avoid that right click and extrude normal and just fill those holes in at this point now I need to deselect everything and select these inner faces because we're going to work in towards the corners of this cube so it's a little bit of a fiddly process and I can't think of any way to automate it to make it any easier so you just have to select the appropriate faces for each corner of the cube so there's going to be eight corners and three faces for each of those so I would suggest that uh, means there's going to be 24 faces to select oh yes it tells you so in the top corner right click extrude normal hold the shift key down right click rotate normal I'll go um, minus 90 press space to deselect again because we've got to, uh, extrusion at this point would result in lots of overlapping cubes which we want to avoid so just select top and bottom there's only eight corners to fill in so that's eight selections right click extrude normal and just fill the corners in select the entire object and weld it all together you'll see that the corners where the welds took place are highlighted now select the entire, entire object select the edge tool go to select and store that selection at this point switch to the corners vertexes and use the C key to connect those together you see how it fills the cube in but the point is by putting all those twists in when we connect all these up you get interesting uh, paths that form now if we go back to the edge tool and go select and recall selection we've got the opposite of the paths that were formed by connection but we can get those paths by going select and inverse then we go right click and bevel and just uh, bevel it out and try to get approximately say about 50 percent of the area covered with your beveled area at this point to apply the uh, same process as you get with the armored ball you would right click extrude normal I'm going to use the control key to control the level and go for 0.5 and then you can go select inverse press the minus key to reduce the face selection right click and you shell extrude to bring out this other portion as a separate object or object depends how many form left click you see in the geometry graph lots have formed select the entire object and combine those together you can select the other one and then you've got two objects that you can easily use for materialing and press the smooth key a couple of times to take it down so that creates a similar and probably not identical because it all depends on the twist you put in the cube effect to the one that Artweight came up with however 
what it occurred to me, or sort of create something different, is I'm going to go back a few stages. So you can use Control and Alt Z to go back progressively, step by step, or you can use these arrows. So the arrows work just as well. So you can usually get back quite a few steps in Wings and get back to this stage. At this point, what I'm going to do is go right click and inset. So I'm just going to inset each of the faces a bit. I'm not worried about too much how much I'm going to inset it because I'm now going to process it in a slightly different way. So I'm going to right click and collapse those faces. Now you can see the corners where the faces are collapsed are selected and by switching to face mode you can see we get those faces selected again but they've now got this uh, crisscross arrangement inside them which I'm going to take advantage of to create like a scaffolding effect. So I'm right click and I'm going to inset those faces again and just inset them a bit um, something like that and then I'm going to right click and intrude and try and intrude those so that each bit of the scaffolding is about as, as uh, deep as it is wide around the middle so something like that so you're looking at this area here and see how deep it goes in at this point then press space to deselect everything select one of these on the other path and use uh, the G key and then identical identical I and then G and I and G a few times just so we make sure everything is selected and then I'm going to select face tool and have a look at the faces that are selected and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to extrude those faces so uh, if I wanted that to be in a different material I wouldn't use extrude I'd use shell extrude or I could I could do it in two parts so let's do it in two parts so let's say I want the top bit to be a different material so I'm left click to stick with that and then right click and use shell extrude and normal and that will allow me to have if I can just get to that point it's taking a little bit of thinking about obviously because the shapes are fairly complex and I can place on top of that another bit right there is a bit of an issue you can find sometimes where if, if you have two sharper edges it doesn't look very good when you render your models for these small sections here it's probably not worry, worth worrying about but we can try and uh, correct for that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to very very carefully scale uniform for these faces now, the reason for that is that will stop this outer edge here from being identical to that inner edge so just by scaling it slightly that will mean when it comes to selecting this outer loop which I'm just about to show you how to do it will mean I won't get the inner selection as well or I hope not depending on the sensitivity of the identical con selection command so I'm going to select this entire object because I've generated a lot of separate components and right click and combine them into two so I've, this object is now going to be made of two components and then press space to deselect and then we'll try and get these edge loops so I select that outer edge press L for loop I for identical loop and identical and it's not selecting that bot one at the bottom which is what I hoped it wouldn't do and then do the same on one of these internal loops check that it's managed to get all the other internal loops and then I'm going to right click and bevel it down just a little bit so it just gives it a slightly chamfered edge which uh, should look nice when I render it okay if I want this to appear as two separate components in uh, Octane I need to apply different materials to this and if I want it to apply any uh, Textures that are based on images in Octane then I need to do some uh, UV mapping and I can use UV mapper classic for that purpose and there are other videos that show you how to do that and uh, How that process goes on for Bryce Thankfully, it'll just accept things as they are and it has some intelligent mapping modes that allows uh, the operations with um, textures that are images to be applied uh, directly without any UV mapping so that is nice so the other thing that, I that I'm noticing is that these outside edges are rather sharp too and I could pick those out and bevel them down individually or go back a stage by using Control Z and try and select those so I think what I'll do is I'll just try and sort that out now individually so if I go I for identical it should pick some out and I'm just picking the ones that are on these outer edges that will be about well they should be 90 degrees so I've got those on the outer edges and at this point right click and bevel those down as well very slightly so that just tidies those edges up a bit and you don't have too sharp a corner when it comes to rendering so now I've got these two bits you can see and I should be able to render those up separately so I've got maybe you know one one for the scaffolding one material and another material for this outer edge so okay a little bit different from uh, what uh, Wade shared with me. Uh, where's that? Come back. 
okay there but um you know it's always worth uh, experimenting because you never know what you're going to come up with next i'll just export this object and then we'll give it a render and i'll use that in the initial frame of this video so i hope you found that interesting that you'll have a go at experimenting with wings 3d using a variety of different techniques and combining if you like different techniques from different videos to come up with your own new shapes and then render them and uh, you know, post on DeviantArt and let us know or something along those lines or on the Bryce Talk forum if you're uh, if you're a Bryce user. Okay then, that's the end of the video.